Well, here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, back on the channel, Football Therapy. With me, your host, Jan, and this is a tough post-match presser. Um, for a multitude of reasons, I'm so confused and frustrated with my football club. Chelsea have lost at home to 20th place. Southampton, uh, a goal to nil rotated side um and first and foremost i want to say best wishes to our captain cesar espilicueta who sustained what i imagine was a horrendous injury i actually missed the incident that happened by um i saw the fact how there was no replays and when they don't do replays on um an injury an incident it means it was it was bad and i'm reliably for informed it was an overhead kick from the young forward, Southampton forward, made contact with his head and apparently was an audible sound that was very unpleasant. So, obviously, really, really worrying. I saw that there was a huge stoppage, loads and loads of doctors out. But they looked like they followed appropriate protocol and when he was coming off the pitch in a stretcher, uh, rightfully, all four stands were applauding him, and it did, I saw Nizar Kinsella tweet that apparently he apl he applauded back, which is a really good sign. So I imagine he was knocked out, and you have to assume broken bones in the face. So um, you know, first and foremost, thoughts uh, with him and wishing him a speedy recovery because you do worry when something like that happens. Um, let's get the microphones up. Hey press, how you doing? I'm not going to say Graham Potter out because we are not going to find the best. We're not going to get relegated. We're not going to get the Champions League. And I'm not even sure I want the Conference League. So I'm not going to say Graham Potter out, but I do need to talk about this. Put the microphones down, ladies and gentlemen. It's bad. That was bad. Dortmund was good. What I've been listening to like neutral or neutral, just different football podcasts, as in not Chelsea football co podcasts, speak about Chelsea's performance away in Dortmund and said, yeah, they were like by far the better side of Chelsea. And considering Dortmund are a form side in Europe at the moment, that's very impressive. Um, you know, conceded a freak goal on the counter that was concise or clinical. Fine. We needed to win this game. Granted, there was changes. Um... But we needed to win this game. And there's no excuses. There isn't any excuses. But I do want to just say... Why does this always happen to us? That when we... Southampton suddenly become a football team. They've been dismal. They are destined for the drop. I think. But in this game... We should have beaten them. There's no excuses. But they were just... It just freaking frustrates me. The goalkeeper made great saves. There was a, you know, goal line clearance off the line. This doesn't always happen. Why is this always happening to us? <laughs> I'm losing my mind over here. You know, why Why does this always happen to us? Mate, there were so many cards in this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine yellow cards in this game. And there probably could have been more spicy because Southampton are 20th in the table and Chelsea are just... It's not even a win. It's just score a goal. Score a goal. Graham Potter went with a 4-2-3-1. Uh, and largely, people really, really liked the lineup. Because we heard and understood that Reese James had to be rested out of the squad, and so is Thiago Silva. We all would immediately accept Thiago Silva eventually needs to have a rest because he's pushing 39 and he can't keep playing every three days. Uh, and if Reese James is just coming back from injury, then yeah, I get it, fine. It sucks, but it, I get it. Like, whatever. So, Keparitha Balaga in goal, which left Baddy Ashil and Koulibaly in the back two. Chilwell starts at left back. Good, thank you very much. And Azpilicueta starts at right back. Fine. You know, fine. We had a midfield pivot of Enzo Fernandez, who got the highest rating on our, on who scored for Chelsea. And, of course, Kovacic. And a lot of people wanted to see Kovacic come back inside. And, of course, he's Spanish-speaking. He played for Real Madrid. We had good midfield pivot, Fernandez and Kovacic. Uh, we saw Jao Felix start. We saw Madueke start. We saw Mason Mount start. And we saw David Datro Fofana, the striker, starting up front as a centre-forward. Ooh la la. 
Now, Mason Mount started left wing, and he was really bad. I I wouldn't have started him. I think Graham, because he's got such a good record against Southampton, because he's a Pompey boy, I think that's why he started. But his form needs to dictate. Bring him on. If you want to play him, give him minutes. Bring him on when we're winning. Let him chase people when we're winning. At the moment, don't play him left wing. Especially when Sterling's back from injury. Granted, Sterling can get that many minutes. But Mudrick, just start... Even if Mudrick's not been in scintillating form. Heck, start Chuck Wemmicka at left wing. Start Havertz at left wing. He's a left footer. You know, we'll play Havertz, you know... I just don't... I don't know. Look, I'm not... I was pleased generally with the personnel. I was hoping it would represent more of a 4 free. Three with Fernandez flanked by Kovacic and Mount as eight. That would have made a lot more sense to me. But no, it was a 4-2-3-1 with Mount out on the left. Uh, and, the, the you know, his form is bad. I think he let the occasion get to him. Of course, Southampton always give him grief. And yeah, he was our worst performer for, for my, my money on the night. Um, Southampton play 4-4-2. They're very good. One of their strikers is a giant. Uh, they just played well on the day, and we were undone by a James Ward-Prowse free kick goal. He's just... Did you... I think he has the record now in the Premier League for those. It's just... I don't I don't give a crap, man. Like, have your James Ward-Prowse free kick goal. It happens. We. So I read somewhere on Twitter, we got the second best defence in the Premier League. The second best. Firstly, how? Secondly, I just don't care. Give me goals, dude. Give me cohesion. I'm pleased that we can set up and perhaps stop a team from scoring. You know, you asked Mourinho, Conte, Tuchel. They would all be like, yep, thank you very much. That comes first. And they all won Premier Leagues and Champions Leagues with Chelsea. So I've got no issue with that. And look, I'm not happy with Potter for this game. I was very happy with him for the last game against Dortmund. Because I liked how we set up. I liked how in the second half we were completely dominant against Dortmund. And you'd have to assume there was tweaks and halftime changes and halftime talks from the management team that caused a great positive effect. But this, this was turgid. Obviously, there's a lot of changes. We saw loads of subs. We saw, you know, usual suspects. Um, Conor Gallagher, Chalaba came on uh, to play sort of right back or centre back and Wesley Fofana played right centre back. Sterling came on, as you'd imagine. Mudrick came on, as you'd imagine. Uh, Havertz came on, as you'd imagine. A lot of people didn't understand why at halftime we made two changes. Well, firstly, Wesley Fofana for Kalido Kula Bali at halftime. I got no issues with I'm a Wesley Fofana super fan. I want him starting. I want him to be the successor to Thiago Silva. He'll play next to Benoit Badiashile, the two young French lads. For a long, long time, I endorse it. Raheem Sterling coming on at halftime. He's fit again. We need a goal. We've just conceded late. Yeah, I've got no problem with that at all. He obviously came on for David Datro Fofana. Now, David Datro Fofana played quite well in that first half. But I get maybe... Maybe he might have had a knock. Maybe the, the tactics were well, they were just because they because they'd scored a goal then at that point. Southampton they were going to dig in. Um, we thought we need more mobility. What I didn't like is Mason Mount played the number nine for a little bit until Kai Havertz came on um, for like twenty minutes later. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. So I, was, I guys, I don't like to swear, and I, I I'm about to so cover your children's ears. It was a shit show. It was bad. Chelsea, Chelsea were bad. They were like we had moments, but I don't care about moments. You know, yes, the goalkeeper Ban Bazanu made a few saves, and we were unlucky that a defender um, it might have even been Bentnerek um, play Raheem Sterling's header off the line. But we shouldn't. We we give them that hope. We give them that you know digging in like backs against the wall, fighting for survival in the Premier League. Hope because we didn't. Score one or two goals earlier. That's the issue. It's like Dortmund as well. I don't really want to critique the Dortmund game because I was generally quite pleased with like the progress. Um, but that, that yeah. I, 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 <sighs> look, where do we go from here? Yeah, let's talk about this. I don't think you can sack the coach. I, many he might get sacked. I don't know. I don't think he will. I feel like the uh, the, the owners would just be like, look, 
they back their, you know, by all accounts, they back their man. This is a damning result. This is like, poor, you know, if we like somehow blagged a 2-1, you'd have been like, yeah, we got a win. But if we, you know, a 1-1 would have been a bad result. A 1-0 loss, I mean, it's obviously tainted with the emotion of a, of a really worrying injury to our captain. We're fighting against a new manager bounce relegation script but it doesn't matter like at some point at some point it's got to give i don't see any benefit of just canning the coach now if you want to climb up the table a few a few spaces uh maybe you bring in a pragmatist you just bring in a whoever but what what does that do for the whole coaching staff the whole recruitment staff that work with potter favel who's always our new sporting director who's working directly with potter and carl mccauley and this huge investment for this project that revolves essentially around this coach long term, and they believe that the coach is important, but you know, he's an important part of this machine. They've invested heavily in this. Machine. That maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll find someone similar. But it does sound like you know that's it. I don't want Potter to be sacked. This is unacceptable. Obviously, this can't go on forever. Obviously. I liked how he spoke in his like recent press press conference. You know when he when he talked about his emotions. Uh, he, he does. I, I really I'm rooting for him. I think he's a great. I do think he's a great coach. I am banking on him developing a bit at Chelsea. But yeah, this is no freaking good, bro. I I'm just not. I love the team. I like the manager. I used to love the manager. I like him. I love the team in terms of the talent. Um, I love the ambition from the top down and, and how they approach their ambition in terms of implementation of infrastructure. You guys watch the channel. I've been gagging for that for a long time. I like that. But there's only so... I can't watch my football team get touched up every single week, especially from these men. I can't do it, man. We'll have to see what happens. This, I... You know, give me a, Let me read some articles. Let me... Speak to people. Um, I'll talk to a couple of journalists and stuff, and, and engage a vibe. Um, but it it sucks us. So drop a like to cheer me up. Subscribe if you want. <laughs> I'll always be here, losing my mind. <sighs> Just let's go for a walk or something.